Hey, welcome to my channel. In this video, I'll be going over seven Facebook media buying mistakes to avoid in your media buying career. Those of you who are new to this channel, I'm a growth lead at Pair. I manage all the growth activities, marketing um, at a D2C brand called Pair. And in this channel, my aim is to just share my knowledge and uh, make you a better growth marketer. So I've asked this question to my uh, media buying colleagues. So what media buying career mistake will you never make again? So with the result, I have found seven profound mistakes everyone makes, uh, everyone should avoid in their career from junior to veteran media buyers. Mistake number one is that they're not managing the creative process. So a lot of things have changed uh, since uh, Facebook has been updating the algorithm, etc. So too often uh, media buyers choose to focus on ad buy only. So that's the uh, uh, core mistakes. Um, instead, media buyers should be focused on producing the best creative that captures attention. Creative is your best leverage uh, right now um, on Facebook and same for many other platforms like YouTube and TikTok. And uh, this is what ends up making the biggest difference in ad buy. It's not optimization, it's not these cost gaps, it's not manual bidding, it's not minimum ROAS campaign, um, it's not ASC campaigns. It's more about being involved in the creative process. Uh, as a media buyer, you're being more strategic about the creative, the messaging that you're putting out there to capture attention. So to sum it up, uh, creative has a bigger leverage than media buy and and producing a better creative will result in a better um, output uh, for example a better uh, lowered cac uh, an increased mer and increased uh, ROAS. so i'll give you an example if your creative isn't good no one is going to click uh, it's the times are gone where you just upload a static image of product yes it still does work but those days are gone um, and like it doesn't really matter if your targeting or objective is on point if your creative isn't good enough or if your creative is not compelling is not hooking in the user um, your media buying uh, won't be effective Facebook with all their data and algorithm knows who to serve but doesn't have the food so the food being the creative that you produce to Facebook. Your job as a media buyer and as a strategist is to make the best food possible so that Facebook can grab that food and serve to the right person at the right time using their AI. Mistake number two is that they're not testing variations of winning ads. You know, it takes a lot of time to create a winning ad, to test a winning ad and to verify it's a winning ad. And a bad media buyer goes back to the drawing board to produce a brand new set of creative. This takes time, this takes uh, resources, this takes um, a lot of relationship building with the creator as well. And uh, a good media buyer produces a few variants of winning ad. This is a good sign that you're turning into a good media buyer because you're trying to iterate on the winning creative rather than going back to the drawing board and producing a brand new one. But a veteran media buyer tests 10 variants minimum of a winning ad. I'll dive deep, dive, um, deep into this in the next slide. For example, a veteran media buyer will test um, variations of hooked benefit solutions, CTA, within the video, plus uh, different variations of headline in, in the Facebook ad copy and body hooks within the uh, uh, Facebook ad copy as well. So for example, um, this is actually the same video, but what I've done is I've just changed the Facebook copy headline. I haven't made any changes within the video, so uh, there's no hook changes, there's no headline changes, but I've just simply changed the Facebook headline. And you can see the drastic difference. So you can see 1003B, this is the second uh, creative that I've launched. And this is my fourth uh, iterations on 1003 creative. As you can see, the cost per purchase is way down. Um, and, and I'm more confident that I'll be able to reduce the CAC with this creative. Uh, if you're a bad media buyer, you've, you've 
gone back to the drawing board, asked the graphic designer to come up with a new set of creative, which takes a lot of time. And uh, you may have missed out uh, on reducing the cap and saving you time. Uh, mistake number three is you're not testing creative types. So this is another mistake that uh, junior media buyers make. Uh, yes, we can test variations, but you can also test creative types. Uh, because people, when they see a video, they might be more hooked into the video, but for other segment of your target audience, they might be more inclined to click on a static or a GIF. Um, so there's an, there's an assumption that only video converts prospects but statics and GIFs work. And sometimes uh, I've seen so many times that it outperforms a video. So the, the mantra that you should be having um, is to remember you need to be always be testing. You have to remember that Facebook inventory is not always made from videos. It's mixed. It's comprised of statics, it's com comprised of videos and uh, slideshows as well. And statics work great in remarketing. It also works in top of funnel. Uh, and statics also work uh, great in fashion. So if you have a fashion brand, try uh, uploading a static because fashion products, they're not usually a problem solving product. They're more based on the looks, they're more based on the uh, emotions. So statics can work really well. Mistake number four is that, is that junior media buyers waste time finding the best account structure. Uh, as I've been in the agency, uh, Every account has their own structure. Yes, there are a set of structures that you need to have, but there's no cookie cutter method. So because people sell different products in different industries, you need to find what works for that very ad account and you need to scale that accordingly. But my take is that you should ideally have the following as of 2023. A campaign for creative testing, a campaign for audience testing, a campaign for scaling, and with the new product that Facebook has released, um, Advantage Shopping Campaign. And lastly, a remarketing campaign. Mistake number five is that they're not using Triple Whale, High Rose, or North Bean. Uh, we all think we can rely on Facebook ad reporting, but with uh, things being cookie-less, uh, third-party uh, uh, third tracking uh, being off, uh, it's quite unreliable. So, um, it's quite important that you aggregate different data points to find the truth, so you don't buy ads um, blindly. So let me show you a uh, triple row reporting and Facebook reporting. So let me show you. This is actually the same uh, creative variation that I've tested. I've shown you before as well, uh, but you can see 1003D, uh, 127 CAC, and uh, on triple row is showing uh, more than that, 21, 108, and uh, for 103B is showing 95 CAC. So there's a massive difference if I have believed that this creative isn't working and I haven't checked triple well, I could have turned off. Um, and the CAC target being 100, um, this uh, ad should be scaling. But if I didn't look at triple well, I, I could have lost that opportunity. Mistake number six is that you're not doing a QA, a quality assurance before launch. So QA stands for quality assurance. Um, you know, as a media buyer, sometimes you have many accounts. If you're working for an agency, then adding an extra zero on a thousand dollar daily budget becomes ten thousand, and that's uh, a problem that I don't want to have. As it's going to be a very tough conversation with the client. So you need to have a process for your QA. Uh, double check UTMs. Double check your landing pages where the traffic is going. Uh, for example, the, there were many scenarios when I was a junior, I'll be um, spending a 300 daily budget with the wrong UTM, a wrong landing page, and I have wasted $300, uh, which was not a good sign. And it was a costly mistake. And mistake seven, this is the last one, um, quite important as well, that you junior media buyers don't have a valid testing framework. You can't simply cut off an ad after $50 spent because every business has their own AOV, um, own funnel, uh, different uh, CAC parameters as well. Uh, so these are uh, the frameworks that you need to have. So have you given enough spend to justify cutting it off or scaling? 
um, you know that maybe at 2000 impression you're engaging the video metrics first and 5000 and by 5000 impressions you're you're confident enough to either cut that kill it um, or scale it so you need to have kpi metrics uh, from impressions to add to cart cost per uh, acquisition and aov um, i highly recommend uh, you base your kill point by cac because that's the thing that you can you have the most control over um, and this having a framework allows you to buy ads with without emotions but with cold harsh logic for example um, at pair uh, this is an example by the way but i have uh, my own uh, uh, kpi range for each of the steps for example uh, again this is an example um, if my AOV is 75, I know based on the historical data, at least last 30 days and 90 days, um, my cost per outbound click has to be 50 cents, um, my cost per ad has to be $3.40, and cost per purchase has to be $41 or, or uh, max $50. So if any of the ads says, if any of the ads um, blow out of this KPI range, I need to turn it off. Consider um, putting that into iteration phase or abandoning it completely. Yeah, so this wraps up um, the seven mistakes that junior media buyers make, and also I've seen I've seen you media buyers make as well. So uh, take a note of this and apply it to your media buying uh, next time. Uh, if you found this helpful, please leave a comment below. Any feedback will be appreciated, um, and thanks just for listening to my babbling. Uh, thank you so much. Bye.